we're going to complete the series on the seventh seal. And the seventh seal of the series deals with the outpouring of God's wrath on the earth. Uh, between the um, close of the Great Tribulation, when the Antichrist rules on the earth, and at the end of that period when the church is then raptured out of the earth. From that point, until such a time as our Lord Jesus Christ in fact does return to the earth, there is this three year period in which the wrath of God is then poured out on the earth. And so that's what this series looks at. And in the book of Revelation, um, there are three, um, sorry, seven seals mentioned, seven trumpets are sounded, and then there's the seven bowls of God's wrath. Uh, we've gone through the seven seals, we've had a look at the seven trumpets, and in today's teaching, we want to touch on the seven bowls of the wrath of God. And in this, the wrath of God is then completed um, in being poured out on the earth. And then that brings um, the close to that particular um, section of the end of the age, just prior to our Lord Jesus Christ returning to the earth. So the scripture will open up with today's in Revelation chapter 15, verse 1 through to 8. The scripture says, <clears throat> so the Apostle John speaking, he says, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. Verse 5. After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands. And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. Verse 8. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels was completed. And so this is when God pours out the last of his wrath on the earth. The seven trumpets was also a series of judgments that God brought about on the earth. We're not going to touch on that today. But now God pours out the last of his wrath on the earth. Now when God does that, he actually closes himself off completely uh, from everyone. Because the scripture says that the temple was full with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. And so these plagues that God pours out on the earth during this period um, are that severe that God will not allow anyone to petition him to uh, stay his hand. And so that's why he closes himself off completely until such a time as the last of the bowls of wrath have been poured out on the earth. And so let's have a look at those bowls. Well, they do uh, get poured out in sequence up until a point. The first bowl is poured out in Revelation 16, verse 1 to 2. Don't forget that we have said that chronologically on the earth, although in heaven we see the seven seals opened in chronological sequence, they don't, the corresponding event on the earth is not in that same sequence. And we said exactly the same thing with regards to the seven trumpets. We also said that the seventh trumpet sounded uh, heralds in the pouring out of the seven bowls of the wrath of God. And so it is in response to the angel sounding his seventh trumpet that now these seven angels um, are sent to the earth, well just uh, above the earth, to pour out God's wrath on the earth. And so the first uh, bowl is poured in Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Scripture says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, that would obviously be God the Father speaking, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and a foul and loathsome saw came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. And so all the inhabitants of the fourth kingdom will um, accept the mark of the beast during the reign of the Antichrist. If you go 
have a look at the series that I've done on the last days, you'll know that the fourth kingdom is in fact the Muslim faith, that the Antichrist does arise out of that faith, and all of those adherents to that faith will gladly receive the mark of the beast during his reign. Now, as a punishment to those who do receive the mark of the beast, God causes a loathsome sore, a foul and loathsome sore to come upon them. And so it's very clearly the mark of the beast itself, will, God will turn into a, a foul and a loathsome sore. And so all who have borne that mark, that mark turns onto, in their bodies into a foul and loathsome sore. And that is the judgment that God pours out on them uh, in this instant, instance here, when he pours out uh, his bowls of wrath. We will see as we go through the seven bowls of God's wrath, that God quite, quite clearly singles out the kingdom of the Antichrist for more judgment than the rest of the world. The rest of the world will be judged harshly as well. But like in this particular uh, judgment that God pours out, the first bowl, it only impacts on the inhabitants of the kingdom of the Antichrist. And again, as you, as if you understand the teaching that I do on the series in the last days, there are four uh, separate kingdoms on the earth at, during that time, and the Antichrist kingdom being one of them. And so not all of mankind will have the mark of the beast on their bodies. Only those who are part of his kingdom, which is that fourth kingdom, which is the Muslim faith. And then we get to the second bowl that is poured out in Revelation 16, verse 3. The scripture says, Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. And so this is, we, we see in these judgments that fall on the earth um, through the, the outpouring of God's wrath, that God begins to completely destroy the earth. And we'll see by the end of God, the outpouring of God's wrath on the earth during these uh, seven uh, bowls that are poured out, that by the end of that time, the earth as we know it today will be completely destroyed. Infrastructure completely done away with. And in this particular judgment, we see here every single living creature in the sea dies. Well, it's quite clear as to why, because the sea turns into the blood of a dead man. And so the stench, just think about that now for five seconds, every ocean in the, in the planet, on the planet, turning into the blood of a dead man. The stench of that in the planet would be abs absolutely phenomenal. No one would be able to withstand the stench. People will have to move away from the coast, coastal areas because it will be absolutely foul. Every living creature floating in the, in, the, in the sea because they're all dead. And so it is an extremely harsh judgment that God pours out on the earth at that time. Now when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the earth, one of the things that he does is he actually restores the oceans of the earth. And we pick it up in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 8 and 9. The scripture says, Then he said to me, this is an angel speaking to the prophet Ezekiel, This water flows from the eastern region, uh, sorry, flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. This is water that is flowing from under the right side of the temple of God on the south side of the altar. So where our Lord Jesus Christ will reign from when he comes to the earth. And so the river of life will flow from the Lamb at that time. Not from our God the Father, for God the Father will still be in heaven, in heaven at that time. And this is not speaking about the river of life that flows from the throne of God through the heavenly city of Jerusalem. This is the river of life that flows from the Lamb, from the city of Jerusalem, from the temple, when our Lord sets up His reign in the earth when He returns to the earth. And so this is what transpires when that river of life flows in this current earth that we currently live in. Um, he says, when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Verse 9, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the rivers go, will live. There will be a, a very great multitude of fish, because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. 
And so we see that when our, our Father pours out His judgment on the earth, the second bowl that He pours in, onto the earth uh, destroys everything in the, in the oceans of the world. Every living creature is killed. And all of the oceans of the world are turned into the blood of a dead man. Now when our Lord returns, and the river of life flows from His throne, from the city of Jerusalem, that river will enter into the sea, and when it does, it begins to heal the oceans. And so the Lord then reverses the judgment that God pours out on the earth when he, during that three-year period. So when our Lord comes to the earth to set up His reign for a thousand years, our Lord then reverses this judgment um, and heals the oceans of the earth and obviously causes uh, marine life to come back into the oceans once again. But it's that second bowl that causes this um, tremendous judgment to uh, fall on the earth. And just think about it, uh, 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 the city I live in is right next to the sea. And so, you know, I've often said to people when we sit next to the sea, imagine this turning into blood, because that's what will happen on that day. God will turn the oceans of the earth into the blood of a dead man. And as I say, the stench from that will be absolutely astronomical. And then the third bowl is poured out. Scripture says in Revelation 16, verse 4 and 7, or 4, 2, 7, should I say. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is, who was, and who is to be, because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. For it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And so mankind by this time will really be struggling to survive on the earth because God the Father would have now turned the oceans into blood. He now turns all of the rivers and springs in, on the planet into blood as well. And so, again, a, a lot of what we see judgment-wise is what our, our Lord did in Egypt when He judged Egypt and He delivered Israel. It's just this judgment is on a huge scale, it's global. Whereas when, I, when God the Father first judged Egypt back um, a few thousand years ago, it was localized to the, the, the nation of Egypt or the country of Egypt. But the judgment that will be poured out during this time will be globalized. And so, if you recall, um, God turned their river into blood. And so they couldn't drink the water. And that's exactly what God will do once again. But this time he will do it to every single river and every single spring in the earth. And so mankind, as I say, will be hard-pressed to find a way to remain alive because of these judgments that God pours out on the earth. Then the fourth bowl will be poured out. Revelation 16, verse 8 and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. And so we see that God will, at the end of the age, uh, increase the, the magnitude of the, the heat of the sun that strikes the earth. We don't know how much it will be increased by. The Bible talks about men being scorched with great heat. And so, you know, whereas I think the, the mankind finds it quite harsh to live in, in centigrade, centigrade uh, temperatures of um, in the 40s, I think we're looking in the upper 40s, maybe even into the 50s. Um, men will really struggle to live on the planet during this time. Don't forget, they've got to run out of drinking water. And now they've been scorched with great heat. Um, so it'll absolutely be a torrid time for mankind on the earth over this period. Now what is amazing to see is that even though they go through all of these judgments, look at their response. The Bible says, they blasphemed the name of God who had power over these plagues and they did not, not repent nor give him glory. So it shows you just the hardness of their hearts that even though they go through these harsh judgments, they refuse to repent. 
again, um, Pharaoh being a type of the world in this instance because Pharaoh also refused to repent, even though God brought judgment after judgment after judgment on him. And then we get to the fifth bowl poured out. Scripture says in Revelation 16, verse 10 and 11, Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and did not repent of their deeds. And so, again, we see here, this is another judgment of God being poured out on the earth, but he singles out once again the kingdom of the Antichrist, um, because the kingdom of the Antichrist will be geographically located within the Middle East area, basically, and spreading out from that point. So this particular judgment, this, this darkness that can even be felt, uh, does not uh, come across the whole earth. It only comes across the kingdom of the Antichrist. The, the scripture teaches us that very clearly. It goes on to teach us about the fact that their, their pains and their sores, um, they know their tongues because of the pain. So obviously still referring to that foul and loathsome sore that God causes to come upon their bodies, which is the mark of the beast, turns into a foul and loathsome sore. And obviously a very painful one. And that painful... Um, sword just doesn't ever go away during this whole period and so the kingdom of the Antichrist is definitely singled out during this time uh, for God's judgment now again the last time that the earth experienced this type of judgment because the Bible speaks about this judgment that the darkness can even be felt is again if we go back to the old covenant when um, God caused the darkness to come upon Egypt we can go look at that account in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 to 23. Then the scripture says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all of the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. And so it's not a case of the, you know, the darkness that, that can put on a light and still see. The, the, the darkness is that thick that a light has no effect on anything around it. Um, and even if you've got a, a bright torch of you shining, it'll just shine right there. It will not be able to illuminate anything. And so people will not be able to move. That's exactly what happened in Egypt at that time. For three days and three nights, no one could move because there was just no light. The, the darkness could be felt. This, um, the judgment that is poured out on the kingdom of the Antichrist in the last days, the scriptures silent us as to what period of time elapses for that darkness to fall. I, I, I'm fully convinced it will not be just for the three days that Egypt experienced, but it will be similar type of darkness. So much so that, as I say, the brightest light, man-made light, that can think about a, a search light on, on a lighthouse for you can say, uh, that light will not make an impact on anything because it will strike the darkness and it stop right there. So no illumination will be, be seen. Nothing can be illuminated in that darkness and so people will become completely immobile they won't be able to go and do anything because they just cannot move